All right. Welcome, everyone. In today's rapidly evolving technology landscape, generative AI applications are becoming increasingly prevalent, and securing them on AWS is of utmost importance. I am Nitin Kumar, Senior Cloud Architect with AWS Professional Services, and today I'll be talking about some of the risks, security considerations, mitigation strategies, and best practices to secure your generative AI application. I'll start with some security trends. We'll talk about considerations, and finally dive deep into mitigation strategies. So as you embark on your journey to develop uh, uh, your, your, your uh, generative AI applications, it's important to consider uh, security from the outset. Let's talk about compliance and governance. You need to establish clear usage guidelines for your application within your organization, that when, where, and how these applications should be utilized. Think about monitoring and reporting processes. Are your existing tools good enough to handle these uh, new logging uh, details that you'll be getting? You might be now prone to have more sensitive information in the logs that you collect. Carefully assess the content you're generating through your application. Are there any legal considerations in terms of advice that you're providing? Or are there any privacy concerns for the data that you'll be storing as part of your app? Establish controls to secure your application. This details out in finding out guardrails, which are inherent within your application or your foundation model. Having guardrails in your prompt itself, and if you use application or service like Amazon Bedrock, how you can implement guardrails there. Have access and identity management across your development lifecycle. Think about who can modify your prompts. That changes the behavior of your application itself. Risk management. We'll talk about risk management in a bit more detail, but for now, think about threat modeling. How do you do the threat modeling for your generative AI application? Define clear ownership of the data, which includes your prompts and the response data that you'll be storing. And last but not the least, resilience. What that means is in this scenario, you'll be using foundation models, and you need to des design your application in a way that you handle the throttling concerns of your foundation models itself. They may have control, uh, uh, some limitations on how many tokens they can process per second, both input and output. So let's dive deeper into the generative AI application risks. Your application will be using a foundation model, a large language model, and using consumer data or your customer data at different stages, which could be from training, fine-tuning, prompting, and even the responses itself. You may choose to host your model itself or use services like Amazon Bedrock to inference. This data usage has different layers of building your model, deploying your model, and consuming your model entails some additional risks that you need to consider. Let's look at the top layer risks. These top layer risks are concerned or related to your use case itself. Talking about are there any legal uh, implications? Are you providing advice which may be illegal or not considered safe in certain countries? Is your model hallucinating? Is it providing factually incorrect answers which seems, it's, which seems to be correct? Or are there, in general, safety and toxicity concerns of the, of the outputs that you'll be producing with your application? The second aspect or the middle layer risks are your hosting layer, how your model are being hosted and inferred from. Are there appropriate data retention policies in place? How you're storing your conversation histories, if it's a chatbot? Who has access to it? Your prompt template, templates, who can modify those prompt templates? And the last or the bottom layer risks are with your foundation model itself. How your model was trained or built? Was the data ethically sourced? Or does, does it have any toxic content or biased content in itself at the time of training? Now let's go through a typical architecture of a uh, large language model based application. 
on, on our left, we have a consumer who might be interacting with an application interface, could be a chatbot or an email application plugin. This application service would interact with your language model, could be based on agents or a direct invoke call to your model itself. Your model is trained on huge amount of data or fine-tuned on a subset of domain-specific data specific to your use case. And on the extreme light, the, there are plugins which your, your model may orchestrate or your application may orchestrate and call downstream systems to collect data or to execute actions in different systems. Now, talking about some of the vulnerabilities and attack services in this particular architecture, we start with prompt injections. These are some of the common attacks that we see in such applications. In this scenario, a malicious agent will come in and try to change the behavior of your application itself. It may supposed to give travel advice, but may be tricked to crack some jokes. The other aspect is output handling. Your model may, be produce, may produce response, which may not be secure, have some sensitive data in it, and there's no filtration, fil filtering that can happen. The other aspect is data poisoning itself. You're fine tuning your model, a malicious actor comes in, changes the data itself. Now, the inferences that will come out of the model will be malformed as well. The la another aspect is sensitive data disclosure. If your training data is not cleansed or anonymized appropriately, it is highly likely that it will produce responses which may have those details as well. And last but not the least, it's the insecure, insecure plugin design. There's no proper uh, authorization or authentication on your plugins, and your application may call an external plugin and do some actions which you don't intend it to do. Now, let's look at some mitigation uh, and prevention strategies for such applications. We talked about prompt injection attacks. It's a whole collection of different types of attacks or different subset of attacks that can happen. Majorly, they can be classified as persona switches, behavior manipulation, or your prompt augmentation itself, in which an actor comes in, changes your prompt, and now your application provides uh, responses on certain other topics which you don't want it to. The other aspect is sensitive information disclosure. In this scenario, a, a malicious actor may try to steal the, the prompt template itself. What that means is it can either use it to, pro, uh, to curate further sophisticated attacks, or it can uh, access any sensitive information in the template itself. In the same category, someone can trick your application to release or, or uh, provide responses on conversation history of other users of the application. Let's look at how we can mitigate such attacks. You need to have robust prompt engineering techniques in place, which defines your prompts are clear, unambiguous, and aligned with the scope of your application. You need to thoroughly test your prompts across when you build, and even after it has been deployed, have continuous monitoring techniques in place to identify the drifts, whether the responses you're getting from the same prompt are aligned with the responses that you accept. You can use ground truth data and mechanisms to match that. The second thing you can look at is use thinking and answer tags within your application, within the prompt itself. What that means is your model will clearly define how it got to a particular response. It leads to better accuracy of your responses, as well as give you confidence or your consumers confidence that how those responses are being generated. The second aspect of it is guardrails. Your model may have some inherent guardrails within it, but you can augment these with your prompt-specific guardrails as defined in the lower section here. You can clearly hint your model to say what those prompt injection attacks that you're worried, with, worried of, and uh, it can clearly detect and tell you that, oh, an, uh, an injection attack has been detected. So that's another control you can put in place. Certain models has particular structures of how you curate your prompts. Someone can come in and close a particular XML tag and provide additional instructions after that. It's important that you sort your tags itself. It's make them hard to guess for your consumers or for your uh, builders as well. 
The next aspect is access control and permissions. Your prompt templates needs to be secured. Who gets access to modify the prompt template is really important to consider. Sometimes when you develop this application, you try to augment or abstract the prompt templates from the code itself into another system. Whenever you do that or think of doing that, make sure they are properly version controlled and only appropriate people have access to your prompt templates. The third, as the last aspect of it is follow the, your language model's uh, specific prompt engineering guidelines. Use neutral language. It's important to mitigate or reduce bias in your responses. If you use emotionally charged language in your uh, prompt itself, it's likely that your responses will have biased answers as well. Provide context. That means you need, uh, you need to define some background within your prompt itself so that your model better understand the scope of what you're trying to do. Provide examples to corroborate positive outcomes and provide examples at the same time to say what kind of output, outputs you don't desire in the responses. And use multi-prescriptive prompts, again, to have some neutral responses back from your model or your application itself. Let's talk about hallucinations. These are responses from your application which you get, which they seem they are true, but factually they are incorrect, and how you can mitigate them. One of the uh, techniques is prompt engineering, as we talked about. Other is your context augmentation. What that means is you provide additional context to your prompt with some ground truth data or your domain-specific data so that your model can answer based on the data that you have provided. You can use the same data or similar data to fine-tune the model itself uh, to your specific domain or the knowledge uh, that you want your model to be trained on. The last aspect of it is you can fine-tune inference parameters. Your model has certain parameters that you can tune. For example, temperature. If your temperature is value is closer to 1, your model is more creative and there's more randomness in it. If it's closer to 0, it's likely to be conservative and provide more accurate answers. Let's look at a typical RAG architecture and see how we can secure your RAG application itself. Now, there's a data ingestion workflow where you provide a data source. It gets converted into junk. These are your documents convert, getting converted into junks. The chunks, they follow through embeddings model and then get stored into a vector, vector store. Next is the text generation workflow where a user provide a query in terms of a user prompt. It gets converted into em embeddings and then fed through your vector store to do semantic search and provide context. This context and your user input is then fed into the main prompt template uh, where the template is augmented and passed on to your language model to provide the final answer. There are several aspects to consider when you try to secure this application. Now, looking at the data sources, make sure you have appropriate access control across the data, where, where your data is stored. If the documents itself that you're providing to augment your prompt are incorrect or has been malformed, it means the answer you'll be getting will be incorrect as well. Make sure you have appropriate guardrails in the prompt template specific to the scope. Ask, define in your prompt, prompt template itself that do not answer any questions outside of this context. And lastly, do output filtering. Let's look at the other common aspect that we'll look, uh, that we have in such application, which is toxicity. So toxicity is considered as an output which is considered hateful, threatening, insulting, demeaning to an individual or a group of individuals. There are several ways of controlling it within your application. You can use model guardrails, you can use prompt guardrails as we talked about, or if you're using service like Amazon Bedrock, they have, it provides out of the box ways or techniques to configure your guardrails themselves. Use the data used in, uh, change the data that's used in fine tuning your model. Make sure it doesn't have toxic content. Add disclaimers, add watermarks to make sure that your output is generated uh, via an um, AI model. Use another set of model to filter out uh, your responses. These models are trained on specific data set which are uh, specialized to detect 
toxic content. And as we said, continuously monitor your uh, responses that you get out of your applications. Let's look at some of the common ways how we can use Amazon Bedrock to implement those guardrails. It provides out-of-the-box functionality in different categories to configure your guardrails. You can enable uh, content filters and the strength of those filters as well. These are like, you, don't, you just have to go and do the selection. And you do, when you do the final invocation of your model through Bedrock, you just have to pass on appropriate parameters in the request itself. That's it. You cannot deny topics. And you can define what topics you don't want your application to respond on. For example, medical advice or financial advice, it's the topic and you can provide description and give more context to the guardrail itself. Uh, you can add profanity filters. Words, phrases, up to three words. You can add uh, a phrase up to three words. You can add and implement as part of your bar guardrail. You can add sensitive information filters. So out of the box within Bedrock, you get options of predefined PII data types. If they don't suit you, you can use regex pattern and define your own data types that you want it to filter. You can mask the content in your outputs, as well as you can block the whole response itself. You can define what block messages you, can, you want uh, as part of your response if a card rail detects a malicious activity there. So let's summarize what we have learned and add a few more concepts there. When you build our application as a foundation layer, architect for specific tasks. Your prompt should be clear, unambiguous, and aligned to the scope. Make sure if you're calling external plugins or developing external plugins, you have human gate for privileged access. When your language model is orchestrating a workflow, it should go back to the user and ask shall I or can I commit this change in the downstream application? Track user authentication and authorization in the scope in the downstream systems to track what changes it has made. Do not allow your language model to decide for itself what is right and what action it needs to take. Reinforce that. Keep human in the loop. Ensure actions are taken on behalf of the user, and don't forget to apply your standard application security best practices. Let's look at more specific uh, controls that you may want to put in place uh, for your language model application. Human in the loop, we talked about. Secure your prompts. Make sure you apply data sanitization and training in fine-tuning data. Important to reduce toxicity. Important to reduce bias in your responses. Make sure you verify your uh, your data sources that you're sourcing from any external source. If it's sourced from a third party, make sure it's still validated and tested before you use it for fine-tuning or training your model. Verify data sets at every stage, and it should be a continuous process. Use continuous monitoring. It's not static code that you have deployed. Your model may drift. Your responses may drift. Use continuous mod model evaluation. And finally, where applicable, provide more context. Use RAG as one of the mechanisms to have better context uh, and more curated responses through your application. With that, I would like to say thank you. I hope you found the session useful. I'll be hanging around in this area after this session. If you have any questions and queries, please do reach out. Thank you all for your time.